Amruod. So we just had the Machlokes by uh, about uh, when when Rosh Chodesh should be. And I had raised the question last week whether Rosh Chodesh should be, um, whether we're talking about the power of Sanhedrin to define Rosh Chodesh, because HaChodesh HaZelochem, Hashem gave us Rosh Chodesh, and that was one of the consolations that was given um, you know, that Rabbi Gamliel defines when the month is because the calendar was given to humans, even though he based his his um, Rosh Chodesh and therefore his Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur on, um, on false testimony. The um, the right, the other the other uh, consolation that that uh, he was given was that um, it was more involved in all of halacha. That's the power of Sanhedrin to decide halacha. And if you start second guessing that Sanhedrin, you'd be second guessing your way all the way back to Moshe. And halacha couldn't work if we don't accept what Sanhedrin says. So in the answer to the whole story about the fight over whether Rav Gamliel Rosh Chodesh was the real Rosh Chodesh and whether Yom Kippur was the real Yom Kippur, uh, you actually get two ways of looking at this plurality thing. One is that we get to define the calendar, but in general, law doesn't have a plurality. And the other one was that no, law has to be defined by human beings uh, because otherwise the whole system doesn't work. So now looking at the second half of the Pasuk of this Pasuk, which was the first half was actually a little tangential to the Ron's point. He just dealt with the Pasuk as a whole. So Vamru owed, so they st- the Chazal say Stay further on the second half of this post from Kohelas. Bale Asufos. So we're looking now at the words in bold on the Pasuk. Bale Asufos Nitanu Miroa Echad. These are our masters of groups, of gatherings that were all given by one shepherd. So Bale Asufos, Chazal saying Chagiga, Elu Tamide Chacham. These are Tamide Chacham. Shiyushim Asufos Asufos. They sit in, in small groups. They sit in groups. I don't know why I said small. Both in the Torah and they and they toil in the Torah. Hello Luma Tamin. So these say such a such a thing as Tame. Hello Matarin, these say such a thing as Tahar. Hello Osrin. This is like like the old joke. Everything's machlokis, right? What what's Allah of this? It's machlokis. Hello, Osrin. So this group says, you know, the CRC says. You can't have a, even a plain coffee in Starbucks. And this group says, no, it's perfectly fine to have coffee at Starbucks. Hello, Postlin. These say an asterisk with this kind of market is, is puzzle. And this group says that no, such an asterisk is kosher. Not only that, it's hooder. I mean, what are you talking about? Shema Yomaradam. So if a person would say, hey, how could I possibly learn Torah at this point? Talmud Lomar, Kulam Nitinu Meroa Echad. That's why the the rest of the Pasuk says Nitinu Meroa Echad. The Kulam is is uh, inserted. So my quote's not in the right place. Uh, this comes to teach that they were all given by a single shepherd. Okay, shepherd with a capital S. Echad Nisanan, one God gave all these rulings. Parnas Echad Amaran, one benefactor said them all. They came from the master of all that was made. Blessed be he, Dixiv, as it says in the Pasuk, in Shmos, Hashem said all of these things, saying, Dear Shumilas Paul, and Chazal Dash in the word Kol, even the words of somebody who didn't grasp the truth. Now this raises a huge dilemma. And that is, what do you mean that somebody who didn't grasp the truth, his words were said to Moshe in Sinai? Right? The obvious question, which the Ron is about to ask. What do you mean? Hashem's busy teaching Moshe on our Sinai a bunch of of, of mistakes just because some later person's going to make the mistakes and now that's part of the the tradition. 
So in the next um, you know, couple of paragraphs, the Ron's going to be discussing this entire idea of how machlokas works and what does halachic plurality mean. When it says, Elu ve'elu, divrei chayim, these and those are the words of the living God, what does it mean that that harnas echadom, that they were both said by the same benefactor? What does that mean? Right? Like, like how can how can X and not X both come from the same from the same source? We're okay. This topic, by the way, comes up on Avoda like all the time. So indeed, this must be understood. Right? We have to think about this. That both groups, both classes in the Machlokas. Nemer Lemoshe mean Piyak Vura. We're spoken to Moshe from Hashem's mouth, from the Almighty's mouth. Hine Shamai Vihim Hillel Chilku. Shamai and Hillel had a dispute. For example, Shamai Omer me Kav Chala, Lechala, that once you have a Kav of dough, a measure of dough, Kav is a unit measure, I'm trying to say, it's Chayev Chala de Raisa. So from the Torah, you have to give chala once it's once you have one kav of dough. Hello, Lomar mi kavayin, I think, because it's two kavim. The MS she'echad mishnei adeos who does amiti. So we, in truth, one of these has has to be true. Vasheni does havcho, and the other one has to be, you know, the other different, not true. Im kain ein lidrosh. Imkain ain ledger shiatim in Piagura del T uh Davar del T Amiti. Uh but if so, we can't possibly darshan that Hashem said something that wasn't true. So this is the big question, right? How do we have Elu Velu Divermukum Chaim if one side's right and the other side's wrong? Avalinyan Kahu. This is the, the crux of the matter. All the Torah, both written and oral, were given to Moshe on Har Sinai, or at least in, in Sinai. Um, to Moshe Amru Megillah, like it says in Megillah, the reason why I correct myself was it's possible that all the Torah Shabbat was given to Moshe at Har Sinai, but the Torah Shabbat was not complete until. Uh, the end of the 40 years. And there's a machlok as whether it was all given at the end of the 40 years or if it was given piece by piece during the course of the 40 years. But either way, it was not given at Har Sinai. So the, the oral, first of all, Teresh Balpeh was given first. And uh, and second, it was not all given at, Sinai, at Har Sinai. So we'll say Bis Sinai in the desert of Sinai or in the Sinai Peninsula. Like it says in Masech des Megillah, So Rechia Bar Abba said it in the name of Yochanan. The uh, the version that doesn't have the brackets and and the and has Ovin is in the Ran's text, but the version I gave is the one that we have in the Gemara. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, my dechsev, what does it mean? Valehen. So, and on them was, on the luchos, was everything that Hashem said with you on the mountain. So, if you look at the Pasuk in the whole, So, Hashem gave me the two, this is the first luchos, two luchos that were written with the finger of God. Everything that Hashem said with you, Bahar on the mountain, and the day of gathering. So, Malame was teach you, Shar Ohu, Akadish Brochul, Moshe, Dikduke, Torah, Dikduke, Sofrim. Hashem showed Moshe all the, uh, all, all, the, all the details of the Torah and the details of the Sofrim. Uh, the uh, the rabbanim umasha sofer masim chadesh 
even the things that the sofrim are going to add. Umay nihu. What? What do I mean by things that so, the sofrim are going to add? For example, mikra megillah. There are other mitzvahs for abanan. So uh, there's at least seven um, out of the bahag six hundred and thirteen, or seven in addition, according to the Rambam. So it has to be one example is mikra megillah. Tiktuke sofrim. What do we mean by all the details of the sofrim? Ema machlokes v'chaluke svaros shebein chachme Yisrael. That's the, every dispute and the the difference and re, differences in reasoning among the chachamim of Klal Yisrael. V'kulan lamdan Moshe Rabbeinu alav Hashem mipiagvura. The every opinion that is sourced in the Torah, right? Every svara that is sourced in the Torah. Um, was given to Moshe, was taught to Moshe um, shalom from the Almighty's mouth. And Moshe was told that uh, both sets as far as deciding between them will, will be according to the, the consensus of the Chachamim of that generation. So, um, so he he's uh, yeah. V'zehu inyan Rabbi Lezer al-Gadol machlokoso, and this is the story of Rabbi Lezer ben Horkinus or Rabbi Lezer al-Gadol and his big machlokos about uh, uh, a oven that is made out of Lego. Sorry, that's made out of mud bricks in a shape shape like set of, in a snake like set of rings. Right, so the machlokas was: Is it permanent enough to be considered a kli and become tame, or because you could take the Lego apart, it um, it is not a kli and it doesn't become tame? This is the famous Tanur Shalach Noi story. So Amar of Yeshua Ragla Amar. So at at the big climax of the story, story by the way, if you want to see it again, is in the footnote. I'm just assuming that we all know the story. If you don't unmute and uh, and ask, so so um, after bringing all these miracles, right? That Rabbi Lezer and Hokanus brought all these miracles, or said these yo know, things, and Hashem brought the miracles. However, however, it's more accurate to put it. Um, Rabbi Yeshua stood on his feet and he said, "Lo he, halacha is not in heaven." My Lord Bashamayim he. So uh what does it mean the Torah is not in heaven? What's he trying to darshan from this quote? Amar Biyermiya Shakvarnina Torah Me Harsinai. The Torah was already given at Harsinai. Ain Anu Mashkichim Bevaskol, and we don't you know, we don't hold hold for it with uh you know the Baskal is not our mashkiach, we need a human. Shakvar um because you Hashem already rode on Harsinai in the Torah, Rabim Latot. That you follow the majority. And now Ro Kulam Sharabelezer Hayu Maskim Al Ha MS Yoser Mehem. They saw that Rabelezer actually was greater, right? Had was more in agreement with truth than they were. Because the Chiosos also, sav kulam amitis amitim totim, right? His, all his signs, they were true, they were just. And were signs from heaven that, like him, Baval Pikain, and even so, Asumaisa Kaskam Asam. Still, in practice, they did according to their agreement. Sichlam. How you know to Tame? Since the majority were inclined to to have the svara that Tame, Afal Pi shall you yodim shall you maskimim hefakemes. Even though they know that um, that this is not the truth, this is the opposite of truth. Lo ratu latire, they still wouldn't declare such a a, a snake oven, a Lego oven, tahor. Bahayu over him al datam, and they they went against their beliefs. 
in Hayumitarim had they declared it Tahar. Kivan Shesiklam no Teletame. Since their minds inclined toward Tame. Shahra Nimsar Lakhmeadaros, because this um decision was given to the Khachmeadaros. So anybody want to hazard a guess before I give my guess? What does the Ran mean when he says that there's a truth? But the truth doesn't decide the halacha, the vote does. It's not like he's saying that both are true, although he is saying both are from God. It's not like he's saying that one is a lie, but one is true and one is not. But one can't be a lie because Hashem wouldn't give a lie. Right? So so what exactly is going on here with uh, with the round's position on Machlokas? I have an opinion. I'm just not sure enough of it that I want to give it for anybody else's their say. No? You're leaving me off of my own. Yep. Nobody's going to bail me out, huh? I'll tell you what I think, okay? Um, okay. People came on. Okay. Um, see, here's what I think. I think that um, halacha is a legal process, and 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 notice he's always talking about svaros. The luke svaros shemei chachma yisrael. The duke sofrim is the disputes and the difference in svara. It seems to me that he's more concerned that halacha follow the way we reason than whether halacha follows fact. That a person should, should uh, a community, never mind an individual, uh, a community should be poskening based on what makes sense to them, even if um, from an evidentiary point of view, it's, it's less stable. Right? He, he's not saying, I don't see him saying that, you know, he's an idealist rather than an empiricist. I think he's saying that halacha as a legal process is more idealist than empiricist. We should be acting in a way that fits the way we think, not acting in a way that we know is objectively correct. That's the way I read the Ron. And, and it's, really, it's really a tenuous connection to his words. So I didn't want to put that out there until I gave everybody else a choice to disagree, a chance to disagree, which Moshe would have missed by his arrival time. I'm sorry, Jordy, but um, your your audio is too distorted. I can I can't make out what you're saying. You want okay, to I'll write it. I'll, I'll write it. No, no, now later. you're clear. Now you're clear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I always found that intelligence is best understood like a, a natural intelligence, like a series of heuristics. Uh, so, in a way, halacha might be following the same path. It's like you need to do something that is easily or fairly easily understandable by the community. Otherwise, it won't get. It won't happen. It's like if you get into TikTok for every single thing, it's like we don't have time for that. We need to make a decision, a clear and fast decision on how to deal with some subject. So just an idea out there. Basically, you need to go with uh, sometimes with what's simpler on the mind because otherwise nothing will get will get done. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. Whereas I was thinking of it a little bit less pragmatically, I was thinking of it as the right choice is the choice that fits the way you think. Okay. The right choice for your action should be in 
in harmony with your with the way you think. Mm-hmm. Even if even if the way you think is not hundred percent the way the world is. Okay. That also um, works. Not in the sense that God would actually be lying. I mean, it still has to be one of the still has to be a very valid spur that came from the Torah or you know, which is the way he puts it in the middle, as opposed to the way he puts it in the beginning, something Hashem said to Moshe. Right? It's not like um now, the Ramam says that anything given to Moshe and Arsinai was never open to Machlokas. And then yeah. there's lots of things that he himself lists as Allah Mishmi Sinai that we do find Machlokas in it. So my cop-out answer to that, which is another like, yo, know, just Micha made it up, is um, that there's a Machlokas and there's a dispute. In other words, there's Machlokas in the technical legal sense, and there's just Machlokas in the just argument sense. Yeah. And the Ramam is saying that a real machlokas where Elu Velu Divelakim Chayim, right, that doesn't happen when it comes from you know, that only happens from deductions, from svaras, from reasoning, from extrapolating. So two people could take the same facts and extrapolate in different directions. But a fact that was actually given at our Sinai could never be subject to a real machlokas. It's only you know, the law is forgotten, and now we have to recreate it kind of dispute. And the, the Ramam is saying that that's not a real dispute. That's a, you know, that in, in that kind of case, there's a right and there's a wrong. And, and if you rediscover what the right is, you, you have to follow it. It's not like you follow the majority. I, I sure, think, yeah, yeah, but I, I made that up. I mean, I, I don't have any source for that whatsoever. It just uh-huh. it's it just fits the one or two quotes from the Ramam that I know on the subject that I know. And it may not fit the 20 quotes of the Ramam on the subject that I don't know. Um okay. just a very quick ex- last remark. It reminds me that I was going to send it to you. I listened to a podcast on blue and the Jewish tradition. And uh, there's this whole discussion whether since the hell is not to be found anywhere, the exact process, should we try to reproduce it or not? I mean, if God suddenly revealed, hey, is this murex that, uh, from which uh, the, the, the die is made, well, that'd be at the end of the story. But anyway, mm-hmm. just, just an aside. Uh, okay, I'll leave you guys. Uh, right. I'm still here, I just can't, cannot talk anymore. So the, right, so the briskers actually refuse to use treles because they feel that its restoration has to be from within the system and not from outside the system. Um, at least that's one version of what Rav Chaim Brisker's response was when they asked him about the Regina Rebbe found the cuttlefish and said that this was the Chila zone and started making dye from it. When they asked Rav Chaim Brisker about it, uh, his feeling was that you can't restore uh, uh, you can't restore Allah from science. So thinking about it, that really fits the round, what the round's saying here, that, you know, there isn't an empirical way to reach halacha. Um, that said, I'm a tcheles waiver. But, um, but it does seem to fit what the round's saying, that, you know, you, you need, you need, you know, you need svara from the Torah. You don't, you don't, you know, you, you don't need to be working from, like, what actually fits facts the best. You work with what fits how you understand the Torah the best. Now we're going to take this back to Rosh Chodesh. Because remember that that he's he's that that was the whole that's what this whole you know drush is about, third drusha. Lafisha mitzvah zu the mitzvah of Rosh Chodesh he has chalas ha-Torah. It's the first mitzvah. It's the first of the Torah, the beginning of the Torah. Remember, like the famous first Rashi, which asks, why is there everything from Bereshis to HaChodesh Hazal up to and excluding HaChodesh Hazal in the Torah? And it gives an answer about Israel, whatever, about you know needing to say that the, the Bore owns everything. But, um, but this idea that you know, the first mitzvah given to Kla Yisrael is a start for the Torah. So Lafisha Mitzvah Zu as Khalas Torah, since Rosh Chodesh is the beginning of the Torah, near Mazeh Shoresh the Parsha Zu. So this root idea about how Allah works is hinted at in this parsha. Kamosha Nirmaz, 
Kan Shoresh Hagmul Va'unesh. Just as reward and punishment is also hinted in this parsha. How is it hinted? If you recall, um, the Ran was talking about how the mitzvah was given to Moshe and Aaron. Um, and this was Aaron's reward for being excited that Moshe was going to be the Navi, even though he was the older brother and he was the first of the two brothers to be Navi. And um, so just as there's a hint in the parsha about reward and punishment, or in the, well, specifically reward, um, so too there, there's a hint in the parsha about how, about how to understand machlokas. Kibiyozu ha-mitzvah has-chalas torah because this mitzvah is the beginning of the Torah, ro yishu yirmuzu ba-perish mitzvos So explaining the mitzvos, the rationale of the mitzvos, should be hinted in it. And it shows us from here that through our doing the mitzvahs of Hashem, we are saved from um, bad tragedies. Pegara is an idiom, but it's a little repetitive. Kamo Sharau. Shah mitzvah hazos, just like we see that this mitzvah, hitzila some man deverahu b'mitrayim, saved them from harm in mitrayim, because the end of the same paragraph has the karbon pesach of the night of of the actual geula, which saved them from akas b'choros. So you see that giving the uh, giving the Torah can save you from Pegara. But but before we assume, let's just put that idea on hold because the Ran is not saying the purpose of the mitzvot is to get reward. We'll, we'll see a little further when he when he when he gets you know closer to the end of this of this um of this drasha. Lamanya minu so that they believe Kishomar mitzvah who lamalami oh never mind he sums it up in the next part, in the next sentence. He lemanya minu so that they believe. He shomar mitzvah who lemalami teva hametzius. Somebody who keeps mitzvah is above the the nature of 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 physical things of of existence. Be'eno meshubad legalgal and he's not meshubad to the sphere. The kochosav. So if you keep the Torah, you're not ein mazalz bistro. Right, you're above the the influence of physical forces and fate. Bezeu Shamu Razal is what Chazal say in Moed Cotton. Ramar Ravohu Hachi Kamar. Ravohu says this. What the pasuk says? Amar Lo Ke Israel, the God of of Israel said, "Li Diber Tzur Israel," which sounds a little redundant. The Tzur Israel said to me, "Ani Moshel Ba Adam." I rule uh, uh, over man. I'm going to now turn to the side. So you see the actual Pasuk. Moshe, Diber to Yisrael, Moshe Ba'adam Tzadik, Moshe Yerei Elokim. The ruler in man is a Tzadik, the, the ruler of Yeras Hashem, Yeras Elokim. But the way they read it is a little different. Ani Moshe Ba'adam, I am the one who rules over man. Umimo shall be, and who rules over me? Tzadik. A tzadik. Shani goes here, Gzeira. I will make a decree. Umavatla. And I will um, be, I will be mavatlet. I will, right, if the, if the tzadik, um, you, know, de, you know, asks me, I can undo an evil decree. Oh, assuming that it's a tzaddik, it's not going to be asking him to undo a good decree. I did not make him subservient to nature. So he's not saying that the purpose of, of mitzvos is to get reward. He's saying the purpose of mitzvos is to be a supernatural being. And you notice that we yet again, He's returning to the seam between Teva and and Lamalamina Teva, between Teva and metaphysics. 
right? He keeps on talking about how we were given my separation and knowing how the malachim give purpose, right? And the actual etzem of why things happen is all from the Torah. And this is what you need to know in order to understand not how the world works, but why the world works. And once again, he's saying, if you keep the mitzvos, then you're above the rules of nature and you follow you know, Hashem's rules and they can defy the rules of nature. Um, to me, this is related to um, uh, the opening the opening phrases of Shimon Esrei. So I'm going to bring this in in case it helps somebody else's kavana as much as it's helped mine. What does Elokeinu 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 mean? My my God and Elokei is Midas Hadin. Elokim is Midas Hadin. I'm assuming Elokei is also. I don't really know that because Kale is not. But Elokeinu is Midas Hadin. Elokei Vaseinu is also Midas Hadin. But there's a difference between my God and the God of my fathers. So I'm listing them separately. My ancestors. I'm listing them separately. Or my fathers because it's Avram Yitzchak Yaakov. So the Gras says that all of the first bracha of, of Shimon Esrei is based on Akel HaGadol HaGibar Vanora. So Rechia, there's a, there's a story in the Gemara where Rechia had a student and he came up as Chazen at a time when the middle of the brachos were much more fluid. Um, in fact, I recently saw an article that the middle of the brachos were much more fluid in Ashkenaz for a long while, which is why Ashkenaz has so many more piyutim. I mean, not that modern Ashkenaz has it anymore, but that's why and the Yekis preserve it a little. But the reason why Ashkenaz has more piyutim is because the idea of fixing the text came later to Ashkenaz and Sephardi. But in any case, from Chiyah's day, the middle of the bracha of Avos was not, was not fixed. And so this chazan started going on, Akel, Agadol, Agibar, Vanora, and more praise, and more praise, and more praise. And he keeps on going, and Rabbi Chi at some point stops him and goes, what, what, you've run out of praises of HaKadosh Baruch Hu? So from now on, just say Akel, Agadol, Agibar, Vanora, because that's what's in the Pasuk, and if it's good enough for Moshe Rabbeinu, it should be good enough for us, and saying more runs the risk, because you can never say enough. So the Gra asks on this, so then how do we have a whole first bracha of 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 Os that has things other than Hakel Gadol Vagiba Ranora? We have other praises in it. So he, he shows that each of these other praises are actually the same concepts as Hakel Gadol Vagiba Ranora. We're just darshaning those four words. Like Kel Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, he says is Hagadol. Kone Akol, he takes to mean repairs everything, which is Hagibor, the Kavura of the restraint of not stepping in, waiting until humans, giving humans the ability to break things so that they need fixing. Vanora, awe inspiring is, Zorcher Chasteavos, who may be go out live Nevenehem. So we get the same thing in the first phrase of the of the bracha. So what ends up happening is Elokeinu is um, Hagibor, the god of restraint. Elokei Oseinu is Hanora, the god of awe. Uh, um, Elokeinu is the is the lawmaker of natural law. And Elokei Avosenu is the lawmaker of moral law because our Avos had the ability, as the Ran is saying now, to go above nature and be connected to, to moral law. And there's much more to be said about it. Maybe I'll take out the Maharal We'll take a little detour into the introduction of Gavur Hashem. There's like five of them. One of the introductions of Gavur Hashem goes into the, the nature of miracles and how miracles are related to the person's perspective by being Lamalamina Teva. If the person's above nature, 
then his um, then his experience is not natural. But uh, Maral takes us even further from the run, so maybe that's a good you know we maybe maybe we'll do a detour topic next week. This week, though, to get back to the point, um, the Ron is saying that one of the hints in this first mitzvah of Achodesh Hazelachem is, um, you know, all the way through to to the current pay, the first current Pesach, what is that um, giving give following mitzvahs takes a person from being a physical creature where the dominant laws are the laws of nature and makes him a supernatural creature where the dominant laws are Hashem's laws. And therefore, you go from being subject to, well, why I call it Elokeinu, to Elokei Vosenu, from being subject to, to um, yeah, right, we have the same thing um, with non-universal Ashkocha Pratis. The idea that a punishment could be that a person is being left to nature, right? That Hashem won't intervene, right? Tzaddik, when it's when bad things happen to a tzaddik, it's definitely for you know to teach him something because Hashem intervenes. But a person, at least in the way the Rishonim viewed the world, that Ashkocha is not universal. Uh, a, 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 you know, a person could have just not earned getting hashkacha pratis, and therefore his punishment is that he's not lamalamin, hateva. He's just stuck to teva. Right? Like the Rishonim, we talk about valachti mi bekeri. Just as you walked with me, bekeri, which has multiple translations, so too I will walk with you, bekeri, and the Rishonim say that means bemikra, that he abandoned us to nature. There's this idea of of being subject to nature as a as a punishment. But here the Ron is taking a more positive view that one of the things that you should learn from this first mitzvah is that if we do the mitzvahs, we could rise above being natural creatures. And this uh, belief is 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 shown true through the whole Torah. There are three points in the Torah that you could consider beginnings. The first one is So this is to show them, uh, you know, eye to eye that uh, the mitzvah Right, changes the whole na- nature of existence. Kimitzada dam has there a sharhaya la mashka val shtemizuzos through this blood which was on the 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 door the top of the doorway and the two mezuzos two sides of the doorway. Eno royally not so menadever hahu a sherbet mitrayim would not have stopped the plague that it was in mitrayim wouldn't stop the epidemic. He in mitzada mitzvah bo. If it weren't for the fact that it was a mitzvah. Haschala habeiz. So what's the second beginning? That one we just we just had in the paragraph before. Haschala habeiz. What what's the second beginning? Who b'mara? That is the mitzvahs that we got in mara. The sham nemar. There it says. Vayitzakel Hashem. Vayoreu Hashem eight. Cried to Hashem and Hashem showed him a tree. Vayishlachel amayim. And he uh, put the, the wood in the, the tree in the water. Fahim tuku amayim, and the water became sweet. Sham sam lo choku mishpat. There he gave him a, a statute and a, and a law. The sham niso, and there he was tested. Kolomar. So as to say, shana Hashem teva chayko. Hashem changed the nature of his, of his decree. Shanasu im who must speak Basaras Hamachla. He demonstrated to him that uh, that it, he'd be enough to to remove the the the, the bitterness of the water, the the machla, the the affliction. 
Barel Kulam, and they all saw Kikainhu, such as it is. Kizem Mitzada Eitz, Asher Ha, Asher Her Dufni, Kedivre Razal. Her Dufni is just a type of tree. Um, but the point, the, the, there's actually a machlokus in this chazal. If you see here in Shmos Rabba, um, Umahaya, what kind of tree did Hashem show him? Yeshomim Zayah, some say it was olive wood. Yeshomim Arava, some say it was Aravos, willow. Yeshomim Hardufni Haya. And all of these are, are bitter wood. So some say it was it was roots from a fit for a fig or a pomegranate. So the point is that it's not it's it's so unnatural. They're they're each picking what was the most bitter wood that they could think of. And they're saying that that was the wood that I, that Hashem told Moshe to put in the bitter water to make it uh, drinkable. Haskala Gimel, and what's the third beginning? Hayamamad Harsinai. That was, you know, the actual getting the Torah, not just, you know, a few, not just one mitzvah here and seven mitzvahs there. Asher ain't suffik, bechol inyanahu lamalam in ateva, where there be no doubt at all that the whole experience was Lamalam and Teva. And all of Israel reached the level of, of prophecy. Vain Suffolk, no doubt, that somebody who sees prophetically, Mashkif Mitos, right, he uh, right, he beholds the truth. The, the truth, Veroa Osam. Uh, and the one who sees them, Yodea Shatoro, Mitzvotahim, Lamalami, Teva, Mitzios. There, I mean, if you have prophecy, you don't need to figure out that all of this is above nature. Uh, you see it. You somehow or another see the truth that that the Torah and its mitzvahs are all above nature. Ve'elu ha'in yanim kulam morim hora hazaka al kiyum ha'gamulva onesh. So all of these teach well you know, um, compellingly about the existence of reward and punishment. And about the uh, the soul remaining after it separated from the body. The way I'm going to explain. We're all good, right? I never thought of the um, of the Mara being a Haskala, which is interesting. Right. So, so um, yeah, it is interesting. What, but what I find interesting about all this is that he's emphasizing the fact that in each Haskala, we're just given more and more evidence, not of the truth of the Torah, but the truth that the Torah will bring us above nature. Adam, this is this is why I think he keeps on returning to it. He's trying to teach his audience, you know, his, his shul, I mean, whoever it is he's darshaning to, right? He's trying to teach them that, you know, there's nature and then there's Lamalam in Ateva. And and the way to get above nature is is Torah. And Torah has a truth that nobody else could have because everybody else only sees things from the outside. And we have the manufacturer telling us how things actually are. And to him, this is like the whole mile of the Torah. Like you're living not by the rules of nature, but by the rules that cause the rules of nature. And that brings you above nature in a, in a causal sense. You are now living by more fundamental rules. And nature can't touch you the same because you're now working, you know, it's like a poet. A poet can, can violate the rules of grammar because he feels where they're coming from, you know? So that's kind of, to me, that seems to be like very fundamental to his whole conception of Yadus. Hmm? Mm -hmm. It's a known thing 
Shein echad menafashos hashalosh. None of the three souls. So here he's talking about the idea that there are four kinds of souls, but he's ignoring domain. He's ignoring um, inanimate objects. So you have the plant soul, the animal soul, and the human soul. Hanefesh hatzel machas, the plant soul, the you know the growing soul, litzomeach for a plant. Hanefesh achionus lechai. And the animal soul to animals, biltima daber. Sorry, lechai biltima daber to animals that don't speak. And the soul that speaks to human. It's interesting. I just realized he is counting a human as an animal, as a chai, because he has to limit animals to chai biltima daber. Um. You know, I, I'm off put when I'm watching a, you know, a YouTube science show, and they talk about non-human animals, which is why I think I just, you know, I'm taken by the fact that Ron is Ron is actually defining an animal as a high believing a bear, a non-human, right? I don't know. I find it interesting since it bugs me when, like, you know, when they're trying to erase the specialness of human. In a science, yo, know, it bugs me, and now the Ron's doing it. Okay, but never come into Beres Adam, and the speaking soul comes to a human. In achas me'elu musagas b'chush, you never see a soul, right? They're they're not they're not sensory. You know, you don't perceive them with your senses. Amnam kuyam etzleinum mitziusam, but their existence is established with us. Mitzad haraz pulasam because we see their effects, we see their action. He kishereinu atzameach misnoea bechol peosav. We see that a plant can move in any direction. Yadanu shalo yisapi kazeh teva bilvad, and we know that that the normal nature doesn't explain it. Without biology, you know, if you just do chemistry, it just doesn't work. Ki atenua tivit. I don't know what he means by this. Natural law is is either from the middle to the circumference or from the circumference to the middle. I don't know what that is. I mean, you know, I, um, falling objects fall. Um, did he know that the earth was a sphere and they're falling toward the middle? Maybe. I mean, maybe that's actually it, because we saw also when he was talking about the elements that some elements rise up because that's their natural place, and some elements fall down because that's their natural place, and things return to their natural place in the very Aristotelian physics. So, so maybe that maybe that is what he means now. So the article it basically says that in the line with the geocentric model, the Earth is the center, and the heavenly sphere is surrounded on all sides, forming the perimeter or circumference. The four basic elements of the universe, fire, air, water, and earth, are understood to operate naturally in the following two ways. Fire and air move, move always in a straight line to the perimeter, that is upward. Thus, no matter the direction one holds a torch, the fire and smoke, which is the ear, always rise vertically. Water and earth, on the other hand, always progress to the lowest available point. Right. So, in other words, of the four uh, forces that physicists today acknowledge exist, they didn't know about electricity. They didn't think much about magnetism. Nuclear forces, they certainly didn't know about. So the only law of nature he could discuss was gravity, which they didn't understand as gravity. They understood as things returning to the to, to, to where they are. In the, okay, so that makes sense. But I didn't realize that until I started saying it out loud to you, which is why I said I didn't understand it. And then as I'm reading it, it, I caught up with the art scroll. Or maybe three weeks ago when I read the art scroll, when we, well, more, much more than that, two months ago at the beginning of the Drusha, I, might, I could have read in the art scroll. And two months later, I didn't remember it was there. And now suddenly, you know, the subconscious brought it up. I can't, I, I, that's more likely than I just remembered it. Anyway, Anyway, <laughs> 
והשתתפו בזה שני כחוס. So it's established by us that there's this also this nefesh called a chai, right? Um, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to to what um trying to think chonis. Um, I I can't get a a meaning that to the word that adds to the sentence. So, um, in the in the soul of the chai, right? There's a partnership of two forces or two potentials. You have the the tomeach life, the tomeach, and the power of being a tomeach and the power of being a chai. So he's saying it's not that a chai has two souls. Chai is one soul that includes all the properties of the Tzomeach soul. So it has two kochos. Hashem be'oro koach masi katznua beratzon. Through this power of Chai, it can choose whether or not to act. Right? A plant just acts. Right? There's no volition. And with an animal, you add the concept of volition. Because and when we look at a person, we see these forces. And in addition, beyond that, we also see another potential, and that is the power to think. Or to understand. And we know that an animal can't think the way a human can think. So a human has a sheet of all three kochos. Humans grow and do natural processes you know, without thought. They have volition to choose to move or not move. And we also have the ability to understand what we're doing. Uh, the, we established the truth of these, of these souls. Right? That was the whole point of getting into the discussion of souls. By seeing how they act. By seeing that a person can do this. By a plant can only do that. But not, not through you know, perceiving... Right, you don't really know that it, that a, this is where solipsism is possible, right? You don't really know what's going on in another person's head. He acts the way in a way that we associate with understanding, so we assume he understands. So too should we judge how these souls um, remain. Uh, sorry. Uh, are established and remain, you know, uh, by how we see that they're established and remain. So we're not going to get to the essence of a of a soul and what keeps the soul going. We're only going to know by by um, perceivable outcome. We see by plants and animals. Everything that they need to live is things that are outside of them. Um, uh, sorry, things are physical and nothing else. And if you lose, right, if an animal doesn't have food, he's gone. Aval kasher, if you don't have the these uh, these physical supplies, then, then right, aval kasher, ra'inu ba'adam, we see in a person, she is kayem in yano, al hefek kaminag tv. We see that a human, right, he can survive through non-natural, 
from the opposite of the nat what you think is naturally. You would you would think that uh, these are things that should not be right. What brings a soul into a body? And we see by our eyes the exact opposite. That the the human soul right keeps the body alive in ways that are the opposite of what you'd want the, of what the body. You would expect the body would want. And so, this is, by the way, um, if you remember when he talked about um, the um, other nations seeing Am Chacham Benavon, and he said, because we must know something that they don't know, because we follow these Kukim, which are totally incomprehensible. And because of that, things work out well for us. So without knowing how, and that's why he's emphasizing here, we don't know the how. We just see the, the cause and effect, that there's a correlation between following even chukim, which we can't understand, and having a positive outcome in human life. In Cain, in Yonenu, Kulo, Shekufo, Nim, I had to yeah. drop off for a second. I might have missed this, but the way the article explains is that we see that the that we see a negative correlation. We see that the physical things that happen are the opposite of what should be happening. Is that how you were saying it? Uh, I was saying um, not not reciprocal. I was saying it could be reciprocal. There are times when what helps okay. is the opposite of what you would think would help. Not gotcha. that. Not that a person who eats right and exercises can't be healthy if he doesn't do mitzvot, but it's possible through through um, reward and punishment that somebody who doesn't do everything right on a physical plane still prospers. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so I wasn't taking an absolute rule of nature for the simple reason that um, I don't want to ignore my own experience. I have a problem with in, in general is Harvard ownish conversations that just run counter to like lived life. Yeah, you know, they sound good, but then when you start general rule of thumb, don't give me a theory of Harvard ownish you wouldn't give somebody who's a Holocaust survivor. And that's a very high and that's a very thought high threshold. So don't give me Harvard ownish stories. I mean, you know, like basically the same thing, right? Yeah. In in okay, I wanna See if we could get to the end of the paragraph in the same amount of time. We're already overrun. Um, so you see that the body follows the soul. And that's why it's possible to do things that you wouldn't think would help the body, and yet they do. So after you see that the soul um, sustains itself and sustains the body through the things that um, influence it, the chain tafsid gufa mitad varmam of sidenosa, and similarly does damage to the body with things that you know because of things that do damage to the soul. Chain emosim roshem beguf klal, even though the thing that you did doesn't harm the body directly at all. Yadanu shekiyuma toloi baatzma. It the soul sustenance um, relies on itself. And therefore, you see that things that harm the body don't harm the soul. Uh, the body keeps its own its own loss. I believe what he's saying here is that just as the soul can keep the body alive, even though the body is you know even though naturally that doesn't make sense. So too, if the body falls apart, you shouldn't think that it's going to affect the soul. And then, if, and and he's making a argument for for um, life after death, right? That the soul affects the body, not the body affects the soul. Yeah, I wouldn't call it life after death. I would say soul after death. 
I don't, well, um, afterlife. We usually uh, use the word life for afterlife. That's why mm-hmm. I was thinking of life. You're right. It's not talking about Tchias Hamiz. And therefore, all of the testimonies of the Torah, all the rewards stated in the Torah, right, are physical brachos. By showing us these things which um, can be sensed. Because remember, he, he, the whole beginning of this paragraph was, we only know souls exist by deduction, by seeing outcomes. So he's saying, since you could see the natural rewards, so they'll have it settled in their in their hearts that the fate of the body follows what the soul is. And the fate of the soul does not follow the body. And had the Torah given us testimony of the afterlife and Gan and 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 spiritual rewards, that the soul will get after it's separate from the body. Then maybe they wouldn't be as sure of these things. Therefore, the Torah chose this way, that it will be uh, clear and revealed. That the the life of somebody who follows the Torah is not the natural life. They have something else that is greater than the natural. And we saw we saw last Russia, or was it two Russians ago? The Ron talk about why all the promises in the Torah are for physical reward, why there's no mention of the afterlife. And there he said, because every religion can make promises about the afterlife, it's too easy to make false promises because by the time you have them checked out, life is over. Um, therefore, it brings us, um, it brings rewards that can be established. Right? Matar um, Ito. Your El Makosh, you know, that, that kind of thing. Here he's giving a slightly different spin on it, a well, significantly different spin on it. That the reason why you're getting things that you could confirm is so that you know that things go from the spiritual to the physical. And therefore, and therefore, A, you know that there'll be physical rewards, and B, you know that that the there has to be spiritual rewards because Things flow from things flow in that direction, from the spiritual cause to the physical effect.